My name is Diego Perl. Uh, I've been with Princess for the last uh, 20 years, uh, captain for the last five, and on the Grand Princess for the last uh, just over two years. To do the transit of the Columbia River. Uh, it's about nine hours. We have the first pilot at the bar uh, and he goes uh, with us up to about Astoria. And then we have the Columbia River pilots all the way up to Portland. Um, it's a very deep river, quite safe. Weather conditions were okay. And then just outside of the yard, we had uh, uh, four tugs waiting for us and uh, in collaboration between uh, us, the river pilot, and the dock master, uh, we put the ship inside. We're sitting on basically um, probably about 120 concrete blocks with pieces of timber on them and that's what we're resting on and what they do is they they get a survey of the ship and uh, they set the blocks in place and then they fill the block they fill the dock with water and the ship comes in and uh, my name is uh, Vincenzo Pigna I'm the staff captain on board the Grand Princess since last year and uh, we managed to finish the dry dock. Another one, bust the dust. My name's Lee and I'm the entertainment director on board. Dry dock is a very, very important time for the ships. It's the time when we can get all those things done that we couldn't do while we are in normal service. Um, a dry dock is when a, a ship reaches like a, a few years into its service and uh, it needs some work doing to it. So they'll, they'll bring a ship in a dry dock and they'll, they'll float it in and they'll drop it down on some nice concrete blocks and then check it, drain the, the, the dock out and clean the dock down and then the work starts. All you've got to understand is that the ship is a, a construction site. If you, for instance, if you have your house and you want to knock down walls and build new walls and do all sorts of your house, you know what kind of a mess it is. So really, that's all we prepare for. We prepare for um, something out of the extraordinary. Sometimes there's no water, sometimes there's no electricity. Um, so that's what we have to prepare for. I'm working, I'm as a hotel coordinator at the moment. My job is actually help um, coordinate the jobs between contractors and the hotel department, especially cabin accommodation and everything else. 
I come to the ship slightly earlier and I work before to actually try to accommodate all the contractors and working crew on the cabins available uh, without as much disruption, unfortunately, as it's always done that way. Hi, my name is Andy and we're from Vancouver in Victoria, Canada and we're here doing the uh, K-9 sweep for the ship at the end of a dry dock. They're Springer Spaniels, although we've got in our team, we've probably got 19 different dogs. So we've got Labradors, Belgian Malinois, uh, Springer Spaniels, uh, German Shepherds, but the Springer Spaniels are my favorite. So the training in, uh, for example, explosives, you usually start on black powder and the training in uh, narcotics, you start on, you used to start on marijuana when it was illegal everywhere. <laughs> So you, you usually put that odor somewhere, then you get the dog to sniff it, and then you get the dog to sit down. And most dogs know how to sit down already, and then you start rewarding them. And then you start hiding that scent in different places. And then the dog starts figuring out, hey, this is a fun game to play. So on these ships, now this ship is a whole playground for the dog to find these things in. It depends on which, you, which contraband you're finding. So if there's different things, uh, uh, if you're finding an explosive, that's a whole different uh, realm of who has to be informed for explosives. Uh, that means a lot more insecurity, and if you're finding narcotics, then that's a different group of uh, police or authorities that get informed on that one. The biggest um, roles for especially the staff on board is key running. You know, we, we, we have many, many um, staterooms on board the Grand Princess and they some carpets need to be done, some baths need to be done, the balconies need to be done. And so the contractors need to get into those cabins. My name is Malcolm Peterson, I'm the customer service director on the Grand Princess. Welcome to the dry dock. During dry dock my basic functions is to coordinate the check-in for the contractors inside the terminal, making sure everybody got the valid passports, visa and coordinate everything. Once the contract is on board, my areas is then the revenue departments, assisting the revenue departments with all the work that is happening in that Pacific area. We also have here the key runner sections here, which we have an early surf and an afternoon surf, and we have per surf around about 25 uh, 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 staff members from all the revenue departments, entertainment department, photos, um, all those revenue departments. They work from 7 o'clock in the morning to about 1 o'clock, and then 1 o'clock till 7 o'clock. Sometimes they work till 9 o'clock depending on the workload. It's the same way as the passengers. Mm -hmm. We just, um, as the contractors come slightly earlier because the ship is leaving the port earlier than usual and they go the same procedures. They go to the check-in as all the passengers and the passports need to be collected as for the passengers but it depends on the country and they just go to the ships through the security as everybody else. Where you will go in, the two groups of which you'll go downstairs and you wait until a contractor comes down and asks for you um, to go to a, open a cabin. So we'll get a key and we'll open the cabins, we'll wait there until all the work is done and then we'll go off. Sometimes you're out all day with one contractor if they're going from cabin to cabin to cabin to cabin. station right over here and uh, during the day we get uh, various uh, contractors coming down to access cabins, guest cabins or crew cabins so basically most of them are not occupied luckily however if they are we just need to be there and make sure that everything is safe and you know report any damages as such. And normally they'll, they'll uh, scrape the hull, um, clean and paint the hull, they'll do the white work around the ship, um, they'll make our Princess logo look even prettier. Um, and then the work starts sometimes in the engine room, sometimes on the thrusters, propellers, they normally get an overhaul, engines get an overhaul. And then there's a lot of work goes inside, inside the ship as well. So soft furnishings, carpets, um, couches, all those sort of things happen inside the ship. Of course, having on board so many People. I mean, we had almost 1,300 contractors. The major concern is, uh, of course, uh, to make sure uh, that um, 
the ship doesn't catch on fire. There's fire watch, quite simply that's what it says, it's, it's a fire watch. If there's any welding to be done, there's one team member there um, with a hose pipe just making sure that nothing out of the extraordinary goes off. And we have that, we have garbage, the guys literally 24 hours going around the ship picking up garbage all over um, all over the ship. So, as well as well, the, even, even the galley, you know, for this dry dock, the galley, has been out of out of service. Deck five galley's been out of service. They've only had to use deck deck six galley. So they're still cooking, and they're still cooking in this kind of environment, which they're not so used to. So it's kind of tough for the most most of the crew members on board the ship. I'm basically in charge for the deck department. As you know, there are three head of department on board: the chief technical officer, which is in charge for all the technical part of the ship. Then we have the hotel general manager and the staff captain. The staff captain uh, is in charge for all deck and uh, general uh, the maintenance and the safety and security of the ship. Meanwhile, uh, you know, the AGM is in charge for all the hotel department, which is the biggest department on the ship. Of course, we still have to feed people. Uh, we have something like, at the peak, about 1,260 contractors and around about 1,000 crew members which still need feeding. So again, it takes people out of their comfort zones because the crew mess and those areas are being refurbished. We brought the crew into the dining room. So we've had to squeeze because our horizon court was out of action. Our crew galley and deck five galley was out of action. So everything came from deck six. Literally we have eight pounds and sheep start they have to match because every evening I have to actually do the full account. I have to deactivate all the contractors who leave because we collect their passports, which means for me accountability, 100% of the contractors is to have a passports with us, which means this one I know. I have 700 passports, I have 700 contractors on board. When they disembark, they will pay their account, they will collect the passports and I clear the account, which means I have, I have accounts of the cabins, which should supposed to be empty, that's the fun part. Mm -hmm. And uh, this one's going to accommodation, which means they have a chance to prepare them in case someone else is coming in or I need to use the cabin due to the flood or any other issues or they can be actually told us yes these cabins are empty and they can be empty until passengers coming back and so the main concern consider that we had uh, through these uh, 10 days uh, almost over 1000 permit to, to work so all the time our job is completed on board, like welding, uh, removing panels, or uh, it can be like working on a high or so on. Every job, let's say, that is uh, quite dangerous, it needs to be back supported by paperwork, including the permit to work, where basically we go through all the procedure, all the... the <laughs> the things we have to go in order to minimize the risk that something bad can happen. And we had almost 1,000 of these. So, quite a big number. But if you want to call it a benefit, a lot of people think, oh, you enjoy that, you're going to get up and enjoy yourselves. You can, to a certain extent, but your primary role is to be on the ship. You know, your primary role is to do your job on the ship. So there's benefits here. You can eat the, the food, they can eat in the Botticelli dining room. Yeah, um, we can still go to our bar areas and you can still get off the ship. So we're here in Portland. So once your work is done, you may get off the ship and go out and enjoy yourself in the town of Portland. pool and, and complex up there which looks really lovely and then they'll see new chairs and new tables up there as opposed to the raffia ones that we used to have um, we still got more things to come so we, we can't produce everything so for instance our uh, explorers lounge was the fabrication workshop so everything was taken there to be refurbished when they walk in the theater that's been refurbished. A new chair, a new new chairs, new chair covers, new carpets, new sound system. You know, a completely new thing that's gone in there. So the guest will see changes. Um, they won't see a brand new ship, but they'll certainly see a lot of changes compared to how the, the Grand was looking before. And I say, there's still more to come. There's still more furnishings to come on board over the next couple of months. There'll still be more things arriving. Even the crew get new chairs and their, and their crew mess. So. Still, still new things for everybody.
was, I mean, I was so lucky to do the inaugural cruise on the Caribbean Princess with the medallion. This, this, the biggest thing the ship is going through in Dreadnought is the infrastructure of the medallion, which is literally, in layman's terms, a little round quarter that could revolutionise not just the cruise industry, but the whole of the hospitality industry. Picture this, you're sitting in the wheelhouse bar and you want a drink. You pick up your phone, you go onto your medallion and you order your drink and that drink will come to you at your seat. That's what medallion's all about. This is something that's going to totally revolutionize. Make it easier, seamless to get on the ship. You know, um, if you book a medallion class ship, you'll get a little, you get a little box at home with your medallion, everything in there. You go on the internet, you put your passport, your, your face picture, um, whatever you want to do. And as soon as you get to the ship, you walk straight on the ship. No this waiting around to get your passport checked. It's all done. You walk onto the ship, um, you'll ping yourself on, and away you go. Even going to the bars, there's no need to pull out your cruise card, you know, you'll just go to the bar, you just tap your medallion on there, your door will open, not by itself, mind you, you have to go to the door and unlock by itself, but you will have to open it. Well, this is, the, this is the biggest job they're doing right about now. This is taking 18 days and then a lot more days um, as soon as we go up so we get out of dry dock. So they have to put the wire in, miles and miles and miles of wire in, brand new televisions in every stateroom. Um, when you get to your stateroom, you, you, you'll see a little iPad thing on your door. That's, that's going on every stateroom around the ship. You're going to see all these portals which will become live once we become medallion. These portals where you can find out where your partner is. It's absolutely brilliant. If you and your partner have a medallion and your partner says they're going to the casino and they're going to the bar, you can find out where they are. This is absolutely amazing. So all these things are happening um, here on board Grand Princess. 18 days to get all this infrastructure in, but once we go medallion class, which is probably going to be next year, not this year, next year, it's going to be absolutely amazing. On top of that, we're going to have the fastest and the most reliable internet on the seven seas, medallion net. was to take care of the ship side. We water blast the ship side and uh, then they applied a new primer, a new coat. And, um, and around the ship, as you notice, they start to replace uh, carpet in order to make it more uh, fancy and uh, pipes, replacing old pipes. First we were uh, removing the uh, arches from the ship, so by the by the water blast and he was removing all this rust and he was brushing and they was putting one coat of primer, 
second coat of primer, then uh, white color and uh, blue. It's massive, you got sometimes there's no water, you know, sometimes it's just cold water and hot water. The electricity goes out in and out all the time. There's a lots of banging, lots of noise going. It is a construction, it is a construction. This whole place is just a construction site. That's one aspect, then of course a lot of work behind the scenes, a lot of work in the machinery spaces, uh, from ballast systems to water treatment systems that have been upgraded. Also the air quality control systems that were called scrubbers before. Uh, as you know, the company is moving uh, strongly uh, towards greener uh, operating uh, systems. We got to sell, you know, the 20, 20, 21st when we get back to San Francisco. So we've got to sell on that day. So there's enormous pressure, especially the contractors, the con an enormous pressure 
to do the job before we sell. Then when you look around the dining room, you know, there's this plastic everywhere, there's plastic on the carpet, all that has to come off. And then towards the end of the dry dock, we're gonna have to put this place back together again, because then when we come into San Francisco, we have our guests coming back. So yeah, highlight, certainly the chef dancing on the open deck. Uh, other highlight, seeing how the marble came up and, the, and, and the, the time and the care and attention the these guys were doing to, to, to get the marble back to an immaculate condition. To, to see it cracked and broken and then come back to brand new was, was amazing to see the guys, how they do it. And they worked tirelessly and did, did a fantastic job. It's huge again, you know. As soon as we leave the driver, everyone's hands to deck. Everybody, no matter who you are, you got a brush in your hand, you got polish in your hand, you're cleaning here, you're cleaning there. And we always take our areas like the entertainment team will do the Vista Lounge, the theatre, the Explorers Lounge, and you'll get there and you literally have to polish and clean every single thing. As you can imagine, so much dust is going on. You gotta go in every nook and cranny and clean and scrape and just make sure everything's spick and span. Because this ship has to be ready by at least 11 o'clock on the day in San Francisco for passengers to come on. The yard is quite a dangerous place for who doesn't know what is happening. So normally no one is allowed to go down, but we decided it was a good uh, idea to arrange for the crew to have a chance to have a walk around. And it's not often you have a chance to see your ship from underneath. And uh, it also gives you a different perspective on how big the ship is, you know, from the size of the propellers to the size of the Rather, there's always a big uh, impact on everybody when they, they go down for the first time. Well, we don't offer that tour to the passengers yet. <laughs> and again, just because we're in dry dock, we still have to be environmentally friendly um, and even, even tighter restrictions up here in, in Portland. So anything that's classed as food contact, could be a cup of coffee or a cup of tea, is classed as food contact. So they have to go into a separate container compared to our regular dry garbage. So you'll see a lot of crew walking around, maybe not in uniforms, but uh, and especially this particular one being in Portland, it wasn't a hot one. As in fact, it was just the opposite. The average temperature in Portland was 40 degrees Fahrenheit, which basically meant that if the AC went off or the air, uh, heater went off, basically you'll see a lot of people bundled up in their scarves and they're basically in their uh, gloves and walking around the ship. So it's a very interesting uh, experience uh, as far as conditions for the crew. If you look, if you watch this DVD, you'll see the state of the ship. You'll see, I mean, I mean we're gonna go around and show exactly what happens, how this dry dock works. You know, it's an absolute mess. But when you walk on this ship, come San Francisco, you'll see it is gleaming and it is clean. It's a better ship for it, you know. It's gonna be purring like a friendly cat. So there is an inspection of the ship 
including all the plugs that we remove for inspection of tanks. So we make sure that the watertight integrity of the ship has been restored. Uh, of course, we check the quality of the paint job and all the jobs that the shipyard complete. And then when everybody's happy, they start to lower the dock and uh, bring the ship to a condition that she's still sitting on the blocks, but the water is already reaching all the water inlets that we need uh, to use for the normal operation of the ship. So the ship stays in that position for several hours, and during those hours, main engines are tested, the um, AC air compressors for air conditioning are tested. So pretty much we test everything, and because the ship is almost at the normal floating position, we have a full inspection internally of the hull to see if there are any leaks. Because a lot of valves have been changed, a lot of pipes have been changed. So once the technical team completes that part of the inspection, uh, we give the okay to the dock master and they complete to lower the dock so the ship comes off the blocks and she floats freely. And at that stage, we are tied up with the lines to the yard, so they make sure we stay in the center. Uh, we test briefly propulsion rudders and thrusters, and, uh, and then we have a tug. In this case, we have, were bow out, so we had a tug fast forward, and slowly started to uh, pull us outside of the yard at alpha and auto speed, so very slowly. Um, the maneuver was discussed with a dock master, it, it was call, called zero contact maneuver, meaning because we just did all the paintwork, we didn't want to scratch it, just live in the, <laughs> the yard. So it's called, technically it's called a zero contact maneuver, so everything is done to ensure the ship will come out without scratching anywhere on the yard. And uh, that took about uh, 45 minutes, and then we had to stay. Uh, we had more tugs to assist us, and uh, we stayed in front of the yard for another three hours, doing other tests from, uh, because we changed uh, some of the thrusters controls, uh, so they had to do a full test of that. And then we also changed, we have an upgraded system for the stabilizers controls, and so they had to extend the fins and check uh, the functionality of the system. And today we will test uh, uh, how the system works. So we'll be forcing the ship to list from side to side and then we'll see how the system works. So that hopefully this is gonna be one of the final tests uh, post the dry dock. We have got a great team here, all right? And uh, and although the Grand is an unold lady, she's 21 years old, bless her, she's still a lovely ship and she's still got a great heart. Uh, and it's testament to the crew, the, what I call the fleshy bits, that we provide the service and the, and the care and the attention that this ship is doing so well. I don't know if you're aware, we're actually number two in the fleet for our scores at the moment. So the ship is doing exceptionally well. So. Watching that chef dance around like a kid up on the open deck, catching snowflakes on his tongue and in his hands was, was amazing, right? It was lovely to see. And you see little subtle things, you know. You see the way that the, the crew interact with each other. The fact that I can say to Steve, the food and beverage director, has been pulled all over the place, this dry dock. And he can say to Joachim, our maitre d', Joachim, we need 15 guys, you know, to do this. And his response, when do you want them and where do you want them, all right? Now, those sort of things are amazing, that, that, that out of nowhere you can pull a rabbit out of hand and give 15 guys. So compared to when we first started the dry dock with the original schedules that we have, the dining room provided an extra 62 people to other areas outside the dining room, whether they're sweeping garbage up in the corridors for the housekeeping department, or they're running the blue burger tiles for the staff camps up and down the stairs, or they're helping with uh, extra duties for fire watch and fire patrol. The dining room, I, I can't say enough about how well the dining room, and the, particularly the maitre d', Joachim, has been so good during this dry dock. It's my fifth dry dock in uh, 19 years with Princess. Looking forward for a few more. 
before retirement. And uh, I just uh, want to say thanks to all the crew of the Grand Princess because uh, behind uh, this uh, successful dry dock, uh, there are all of them. They are the, actually the ones that pull this miracle out and they are still out there trying to finish this miracle. The technical aspect is always interesting, professionally challenging at times, but uh, as captain, I think what really impressed me was uh, the attitude of the crew and uh, this spirit of being all part of the same team and uh, all in a sudden uh, there are no uniforms, so there are a lot of boiler suits around, uh, people going around with uh, their own clothes and, uh, and, and yet you can, uh, you can feel there is this uh, common uh, uh, focus on achieving the result of having the ship done. And so the spa team had to do some cleaning or uh, some of the, other, the entertainment department did something completely different of what they normally do. And uh, I think it's also a nice experience for the crew. Clearly there is some discomfort, no water time, no air conditioning at other times. But it's also interesting to have the possibility, first of all, to go around the ship completely free and explore areas of the ship that the crew normally doesn't see and uh, have the chance to work with other departments that uh, maybe you don't work with uh, most of the time. But again, as, as captain, I think uh, it's really rewarding to see the teamwork. The teamwork is something that makes uh, things possible and uh, um, I only have to be thankful for the, the work of the crew, the patient and uh, the commitment to the task. Uh, uh, I mean, if you had to look at the ship just uh, 24 hours before coming out of dry dock, a lot of, of guys were concerned, so we're not going to make it. <laughs> but we did it and everybody was you know, working, cleaning, removing garbage from every corner around the ship. And uh, so well done to the crew for sure.